Okay. Well, hopefully we have everyone. Um, I'm gonna get started. I just wanted to point out one last thing, um, which is why I was struggling a bit when I was live coding. I was thrown off because I wasn't getting things auto-populating and I will show you why that was happening. So when I do this here, where I've typed in or piped in orange into the ggplot data, then I actually get, um, you know, the variables within the um, data to help me plot. Um, whereas if I put orange here, I don't. So that's one reason to pipe your data into ggplot. Um, it can make it a lot easier to uh, specify what variables you want to do. Because anytime you have a typo in a variable name, then you'll get an error. All right, so we're going to move on to um, factors now. And so I'm going to share that screen as well. All right, so if we go to our website, we come down all the way to day seven, we're almost there. Uh, and we click on factors. Um, and we wanted to use this lecture to really point out some important aspects about plotting with factors. And so that's what this module will be about. So we've talked about factors before when we talked about data classes and in some of the other lectures. Um, but just a reminder, a factor is a special type of character vector uh, or variable. And it has some sort of order or rank to it. It's not just random values. Um, and so in this case, we, we might not want to have red, yellow, and blue as, as an order, but perhaps there's um, a, you know, data about art exhibits. And if you get a red ribbon, um, you know, that's, that's second place. If you get a blue ribbon, it's first. And if you get a yellow ribbon, it's, it's third. And so we might want to have levels like this where, where blue is first, red is second, and uh, yellow is third. In this case, this works out because by default, blue starts with a B and it would occur first before red and yellow, but it's possible that instead yellow is our first place ribbon. And so how are we gonna deal with data like that? So there's a really important uh, package called four cats, which is all about uh, dealing with the levels and working with factors. So we're gonna create some data to work with to start. And it's gonna be about high school student absences. And so we're gonna create a table where each row is um, a student and it's, it states whether they were, what grade they were in and how many uh, days they were absent. So we're going to you create a table where we have a variable called absences and we'll use the sample function to create a random set of numbers that go from zero to seven. You could also use the two, um, you could also use different arguments to specify the start of this, but we'll, we'll do zero to seven with this colon. And it's going to be in total of size 32 and we're allowing for replacement values um, so that we can get up to 32 because there are not 32. Um, numbers from zero to seven um, and we want integers. So uh, since there are four grades, uh, sophomore, freshman, junior, and senior, um, we want to have each of those eight times so that we get to 32. We use the set seed function as you remember, may remember anytime we use random data so that we can get uh, the same values each time. So when we make that data, and we take a look at our data. And this time I am prepared because I ran things ahead of time. So hopefully this shows up. Yes. 
So we have our tibble um, with absences and um, our, our different grades. So if we don't use head, we can see that this is a much larger data set. It's uh, 32 rows and two columns. Okay. So if we were to look at the level of grade, we, we wouldn't show anything at this point because it's not a factor. Um, but we want to make it a factor. And the level automatically would be um, alphabetical. And this is not necessarily what we would want. So if we were to just take this data without creating a factor out of it and plot it, which I'm just gonna copy paste here. Um, you have to do the whole name of the object though. Then uh, we'll get a plot like this where we have freshman, then junior, uh, senior, and then sophomore. So this is fine and dandy and we can read it just fine, but um, it's a little bit tricky because we expect to see, at least in um, the American high school system, to see freshman, sophomore, sophomore junior, and then senior. Um, so we don't want this to be in alphabetical order. So the way we can fix this is that we can um, make grade into a factor. And so we can do that by using the mutate function. So we're gonna pipe our data high school data using our pipe um, into the mutate function where we want to change the grade variable to be um, a, a factor version of grade. And when we do that, we can specify the levels with the levels argument. And we can say that we want it to be in the order of freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. And so let me do that here. And now the only thing different from before, and we have new data now, we put an underscore factor so that we can differentiate um, this from our previous data. And so the only thing different now is that instead of being a character, our grade is a factor. You can see that the data is listed exactly the same, um, but that's all that we can tell. We could, however, take a look at the levels of um, data high school factor grade. And now we can see that those levels are what we want. If we tried to do this with our regular data where we don't have a factor, it would say no, because um, it's not a factor. So character variables in and of themselves cannot have label levels. Okay, so now that we've changed our data and created this new data set with factor version, um, and we create this plot again, changing nothing about the actual plot code, we see that it is plotted automatically the way that we would like the data to be with freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, which is pretty nice. Um, also, if we tried to arrange the data, um, so I'm gonna do that here so you can see the whole thing. If we wanted to arrange the data so that it's in order um, by, grade, we'll see that it goes, and I'll actually put um, n equals 32 to get all of the lines or all of the rows. So we can see that it goes from freshman, junior, senior, sophomore with our regular data and with our factor data. It'll automatically arrange it in the way that we would like. And so that's what this slide shows us. Um, and then this is also true if we look at counts um, or summaries. So if we were to use the tally function to get the total number of absences across our grades using the group by function, it's going to output the data 
in the levels um, or order that it expects. So for this one, because this is just a, has a categorical version of grade or uh, character version, we're going to have it in the alphabetical order. Um, but here it's nicer again to read this data um, using the factor version and we see it in the order that we would like. This is also true for cal calculations. So if we were to use the summarize function to get the mean of absences, um, and we created a variable called mean in a new table like this, uh, again, the output is going to show in the order that we had alphabetically for the regular data. And for the data with the factor, we'll see the data output in the order uh, we would like to see. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so what can forecats do for us? Well, it can do something very helpful. Um, say we wanted to not only just see the data actually in this order, but say we wanted to plot the data so that we really emphasized which grade had the largest absences. So um, that would be helpful for us to, to identify which grade we need to focus interventions on um, for absences. So we could use a function called factor reorder in the forecasts package, um, which, um, so this part is not necessary if you have it loaded, but it's just to show you that this is the function. So directly in our plotting code, we can say that we want to reorder grade based on the number of absences. And so here we can see in our plot, it shows the bottom here of what we actually did. We reordered grade by absences. And here we can see that juniors have the least absences and sophomores have the most. I'm not sure if this is actually how it would really look for real data on high school students, but um, you, you see my point. And so now it's really clear, and this is a really important thing to do often with these types of plots, is to make it easy to read uh, which which category has the most or the least. Um, so this is something that I use commonly. All right, but let's say we wanna add a new variable to make things a bit more complicated. So let's add a new variable that has to do with how often the students were late or tardy to class. And so we're gonna add another um, simulated or random data variable using the sample function. Um, again, we're going to go up to seven times, uh, seven times that they might have been tardy. And we'll make that the same length as everything else, which is 32. In this case, we're making it right into the, um, the tibble that we've already created, uh, the factor one. And so we're mutating to create a new variable called tardy um, based on this this sample vector. And then when we run that, we see that we get data that looks like this. So we have our new variable called tardy. Okay, so now if we wanted to plot each of our variables of interest, we could plot um, each one ordering by grade ordering grade by absences and by tardiness. So this is helpful for us to see which grade is having trouble with, with which issue. So now we can see that juniors are the most tardy, um, that sophomores have the most absences. And then if we were to, if we wanted to order um, tardiness by absences to see how bad the situation was in, for example, the sophomores, we could similarly just um, in our, our plotting code, um, just redo again for absences. Um, so I have that code up here.
Okay, so in this case, um, this is what it would look like if we're reordering grade by absences or reordering grade by tardiness and plotting tardy or plotting absences. But if we wanted to make this plot, we would um, plot tardy on the y-axis but order the x-axis based on a different variable absences. And so that's how I'm creating that. I'm using the patchwork package to put them side by side. Okay, and then one last function that's kind of helpful. Um, if you already have a factor version of something and you wanted to see what the uh, proportion is for each of the levels, you could use this factor count uh, function and then you can say proportion equals true and you'll get uh, the proportion for each of those uh, levels. In our case, we created everything the same. So our proportion is always 25%. Um, if we say proportion equals false, then we'll just get the number uh, of each sample for each value level. Um, how to change to descending order. Um, you could add the DESC function to descend. Um, that's, that's one way you could do that. Okay, so good question. Um, so now we're going to stop and go into our labs.